Acceptable, so, sir. yeah, yeah, people it's do, nice, okay, you know? people do you crazy are free, things. You are free to say what you say. Let me finish, let me, people do crazy things, yes. okay? Uh, but the point I'm trying to make is, beating your wife is very ugly and takes her value and dignity. Thanks for agreeing on that, but having permission from Allah to beat your wife, that is double ugly because in Islamic culture it has been practiced. So I am grateful that since you don't follow your ideology in deep down, that you don't beat your wife. But I am concerned that one day if you become a proper radical Muslim, no, no then way. you will be, you will, you will be under the obligation of beating your wife, no and that is very, God that is very me, dangerous. No way, because God gave me a mind to think. But so the God who gave you mind, the God who gave you mind to be, uh, mind yeah. to think, yeah. also orders you can beat your wife. Sorry, again, what you said? The God yeah. who gives you mind to think also orders and gives you right to beat your wife. I, I, I don't know if he ordered me or not, but I will not accept just to beat my wife because Allah said, beat your wife. Okay. Should okay. be reason. <laughs> okay, so because Allah, because Allah said so, that means you don't, you don't need to do it. Let me ask you another question. Okay. Um, you said you are from Kurdistan? Yes. Um, what happens What happens in your culture um, after you divorce your wife three times? How do you re reconcile that marriage? Again, again? How do you re reconcile a marriage after you divorce your, husband, your wife three times? Well, this is in, in our religion. You know, after three times, she has to marry another man if she wants to come back to this to her husband. So, let me understand. You divorced Sorry. her three times, and if then if I you divorce, want her back? If I divorce three times. Yeah. After three times, she cannot come back to me unless she married another man and divorced from him, and then I can bring her back again. Do you think, is that all right? Uh, you know, have you, have you as practiced idea, that? As an idea, it's not exactly the same, you know? I don't accept. Uh, I mean, after three times, if she don't, I cannot bring it back. I, I don't need her anymore. So, <laughs> but uh, Haidar, Haidar, let me ask you a question. So, you divorced your wife three times, and I'm trying to understand the logic of it. And then, if you want your wife back, and if she wants you back, you can't just go and you can't just go and take her back. She needs to marry with someone else. Up to her. And then that she's divorced, and then she comes back. If I want. If but, you want, if you I, want. But okay. this type of just man, just, I don't accept this. Just one. If you want, okay, let's say sake of the argument, you want your wife back. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Because you've been married for twenty time twenty years, you don't want to I don't know, give up the all the investment you made in the marriage. Sorry. Sorry, I'm just gonna stand here. Uh, so you don't want um, you don't want to give up all the investment you made in that marriage. How would, you, how would you feel as a husband knowing that because you divorced your wife three times, she went and slept with someone else, had a sex with someone else, now you can have sex with her. How do you feel as a man knowing that your wife had a slept around? I don't accept that. You don't? I don't accept that. You no, no, I'm not. How do you feel knowing that your wife Someone else had the sex with your wife. How does it make you feel as a yeah, man? Sex, uh, illegal or illegal? It's not. It, I'm not asking illegal or not illegal. So. No, if illegal, if she is my wife, yeah, she slept with somebody else. Yeah. I will divorce her. I am a type yeah, of yeah. man. I will not accept. Not because of religion. I don't accept my wife to sleep with another man. Okay. But also, if I divorce my wife three times. Even if I love her, if she married another man, I don't want her more. Not, again, not because of my religion, as a feeling, I am the, I'm, I'm a man, I believe, if, when I have a like, girlfriend or a wife, she's mine. Would you, so, because she slept with someone else, therefore you don't feel she's yours anymore? Exactly. Because, uh, especially women, just keep the religion away. Women, I, I mean, 
you cannot share two men, you cannot share one woman, woman because the woman is very sensitive. Yes. It's not like the man. The man can do sleep every day with it. But the woman is, as a psychology, is a little bit. Uh, it's it's a kind of respect, you know. So you wouldn't you wouldn't have your you wouldn't feel you are having your wife in her fullness because she went and had a sex with someone else. Exactly. So and you know so with the psychology of the because if she's let not me happy. Fin let me finish. Sorry, Haida, let sorry. me finish. So because of the psychology of the woman, you don't believe one woman should have two men, but you are quite okay for one man to have more than a couple of women. This is what. The, the rule of the life, not a religion. If you see the life uh, from all the religion, all religion like, like Christian, they cannot divorce, right? No, we can't. We cannot. But the man can have 10 girlfriends. So we, all of the people... So a man can have what? Can have his wife and he can have girlfriends also. No, not Without, in Christianity. But they no. do it. No, 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 no. no. So, <laughs> Christian scripture teaches yeah. one man and one husband, they enter in the marriage covenant and then you are married until you die. Okay? okay. So, let, let me finish. Let me finish. So, in Christian scripture, in Christian scripture, in Christian scripture, we are not told or encouraged in any form or any shape to go and sleep with someone else or become boyfriend or girlfriend with someone else while we are married, okay? So that is not biblical. Anyone who does that, they sin, they repent, they need to turn to Lord Jesus Christ. But, so, let, let, no, no, either, let me make my point. So, I want you to kind of explain in here to me what is the, what is the wisdom of Allah. Okay, I want you to explain this verse to me. I'm going to bring you two verses. Surah Baqarah, 230. And if he has divorced her, then she's not lawful to him afterward until she marries a husband other than him. And if he divorces her, there is no blame upon them. For returning to each other, if they think they can keep the limits of Allah. Those are the limits of Allah. And he makes clear to the people who know. So, in the limits of Allah, it is acceptable that you have your wife in her fullness after your wife had a sex with someone else. Yes. But you married, think, not sex. No, in in the context, in, Legal, in here. Legally, legally. let's say yeah. married. married, that means sex. Yeah, but he can't divorce her until he tasted her juice. You know, that's very ugly term. Yeah. So it's not like they married and went into home, woman slept in the guest room, man slept in the bedroom. It's not like that. Man has to have sex with her and then needs to taste her juice, okay? So, in here, that is acceptable. Acceptable, yes. But it is very ugly. Like, how can, like, how can you... Maybe, maybe Allah, your God, your God, my God is the same. Maybe we put this condition to stop the men divorce their wife for any reason. Because sometimes the man, when he's angry for small things, and he throw the divorce but from his wouldn't, wouldn't it be better if Allah says don't divorce your wife? No. Uh, uh, or wouldn't it be better if Allah says Allah if you divorce your wife don't remarry? Because in the Bible God says if you divorce your wife you can't take her back after she goes and then marries with someone else. That's in the Bible. So why Allah comes and then why Allah comes and then gives like new, very ugly law and then says, oh yeah, like you can't take her back, but the condition is she needs to go and sleep with someone else. That's why I told you uh, to stop the men's divorce their wife. Maybe. This but he could simply say, he could still simply say, don't divorce her. He could simply say, don't beat your wife. He could simply say, 
If you divorce her, don't take her back. There are lots of other ways. He didn't say divorce your wife. He said if you divorce your wife three times, you cannot take back, back her again unless she married another man. But he is not encouraging the men. No, this is encouragement. Let me tell you why this no, is encouragement. Let me say. No, I'm sure about this. No. I know a lot of people talk about this. No, no. Like, do people practice it? Where you are from in, uh, in Kurdistan, do people practice it? What is my practice? Do they do it? Like when they divorce their wives three times? Uh, it depends. I'm, it depends. Uh, it's up to them, you know? I, I no, like, hey, do you know anyone who did that? No, 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 no. no. Honestly, all my life, I can't remember this happened, but I heard. I heard from some friends it's happened. Okay. But, so, but you know, uh, some men accept that. I don't accept that. I don't accept, you know. Uh, so you don't accept even though Allah kind of says you can do that? I don't. I accept what Allah said, but I, Allah, He didn't force me to take my wife after that man. He, he said, if he you said, want to take her back no, again. No, no, let's say, let's say. You divorced her. Yeah. Uh, actually, so let's say, let me, let me, let me, no, no, I'm going to, I'm going to bring a story from yeah, Mohammed. Listen, listen, when I divorced my wife three times, okay, I, I'll make it more easy for you. And she married another man. For myself, I don't accept her to come back to me. Some men accept that. But, but God, Allah, never order the man you have to bring your wife back again. Okay, that's so that's is, misinterpretation. No, no, that's misinterpretation. Let's say you divorce. Sorry, sorry, I didn't, I didn't review uh, what God said, Aydan? but I don't, I don't accept because he didn't uh, give me order to take her back. So, no, le, no, let me break that sorry, down. I your hand. <laughs> so, let, I know that was accident. That's okay. Uh, so here's the here's the issue. If you divorce your wife third time. She's not married yet to anyone. How do you take her back? And you want her back and she wants uh, you back. That's very difficult uh, question. So she has to marry someone. Yes. Yeah. So you, it, therefore it becomes an order. It becomes an order. Uh -huh. So she, she, you divorced her three times yeah. on Friday. It's two, it's two months. Now house is messed up. You can't find your socks. There is no one who makes the meal. Children are hungry, crying. You don't know where are the bills. You don't know that organize, have to organize the home. You want her back. She's still single, but you can't take her back. She has to marry someone. That becomes ugly order. But I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is, I want to read you something, okay? So this takes place in the time of Muhammad. And there is a woman who has been divorced from her husband, went and then married with Mr. X, okay, Mr. Muslim. Mr. Muslim is not good enough to have sex with her, and then Mr. Muslim beats her. Mohammed goes to Aisha, sorry, woman goes to Aisha, Aisha, all of them goes to Mohammed, and then man comes, husband who beats her comes, woman is there, Aisha is there, Mohammed is there, she says, I want to go back to my husband. And this man is not this man is not capable to have sex with me. Okay? Mohammed and th that man beat her. Mohammed says to her, No, go back and then have sex with this guy. Unless unless you have sex with this guy, you can't go back to your husband. Okay? Here's the here's the story. Do you believe that? Do you believe it? Always use sex word. It's not about sex. But in here it is about sex. It's not about yeah, marriage. So to, marriage, marriage is sharing life with someone. No, sex. It's a uh, marriage covering all this. Sex, everything. No, that's not true. But uh, when you say sex, so I that's not. Say sex, I don't say married another man. No, that's not true. That's not true. So. In Islam, you've got word called savage, zavaj, and then you've got word nikah. 
the, the story I showed you, the word Nikah has been used there. And it's like gives very ugly description actually. But I'm gonna read it to you and then you make your own decision, okay? I know using the word sex is like very ugly. I don't even use those words in my Christian circle, but those are the languages Allah used. No, when Allah said Nikah, because he wants to show it's not just married on paper. When he, he said Nikah, that full marriage. Do you understand my point? I hear your point and then I disagree, but let me show you this. Okay. Are you on the YouTube uh, also? I am on the what? YouTube. YouTube, yeah. The ministry is on YouTube. So, this is from Sahih Bukhari. Okay, I am going to read it to you. Or do you want to read it? Okay, we read together. Okay. Narrated Ikrima, Rifa's divorced wife, whereupon Abdurrahman bin al Zubair al Qurazi married her. Aisha said that the lady come wearing a green veil and compared it to her, Aisha is, of her husband and shoved her a green spot on her skin caused by beating. So this woman is beaten and she's got bruises. It was the habit of the ladies to support one another. So when Allah's apostle came, Aisha said, I have not seen any woman suffering as much as the believing woman. There are lots of women, but I never seen any woman suffer as much as Muslim woman. Look, her skin is greener than her cloth. When Abdurrahman heard that his wife had gone to the Prophet, he came with his two sons from another wife. She said, by Allah, I have done no wrong to him, but he is impotent and is as useless to me as this, holding and showing the uh, fridge of her garment. Abdurrahman said, by Allah, by Allah, O oh Allah Apostle, she has told a lie. I am very strong and then I can satisfy her. But she is disobedient and wants to go back to Rifa. Allah's messenger said to her, if that is your intention, then the no, it is unlawful for you to remarry Rifa unless Abdurrahman had sexual intercourse with you. So if someone comes to you today let's say your brother's wife okay comes to you and then tells you brother look your brother beat me those are the bruises and then she shoves you her legs her face her arms what would you say to her first of, uh, of course first of all I, I want to know why he beat her okay. what's the problem no? Okay, so you want you want it to be justified? Yeah, I, I, I cannot judge immediately unless okay. I hear from both sides the story. Okay, so and then bro your brother came. But sorry, but what, whatever the reason for my brother, still I don't accept him to be. Okay, so even doesn't if she that, did, yeah? Even if she did something wrong. Thank you, thank you. I am so grateful you said that. Doesn't matter what she did. Still, there is no excuse to beat your wife. Exactly. Okay, so, and you would talk to your brother, and then you would say, "Don't do that." Exactly. Okay, but in here, the story I read to you, Muhammad didn't say to the husband, "Don't beat your wife." Muhammad said to the wife, who has got bruises and who is being suffering, Muhammad said to her, "Go back to him." And then said, he needs to taste your juice. When you have sex, uh, you he can divorce you after the sex. See, I don't accept a woman to go back by force, by order. So you disagree I with the Muhammad? Something. I don't know about this story. To be, it, it is in Sahih Bukhari. I have to be sure. I, do you want Arabic? Always, always, listen to me, listen to me. Uh, because the time is short. 
before we we judge, I, you also you have to be sure about if I say something, you don't not sure about it. As a human being, I don't think there is a religion in the world, not only Islam, can order the woman by force to go back to her husband, even if she don't want. And if this is true, tomorrow I will leave my religion. So that's why I have to be sure about all sir, this. Sir, you know, that's fine. You, listen, you listen. Let me hear. Haydar, listen. Yeah. Sir, listen. I don't want you to take what I say to you. I want you to go and check it. Yeah. Because once you start checking it, yes. you will come to the same conclusion with me. Yeah. Islam is really, really very ugly religion. So, sake of the argument, this is true. Your prophet. Maybe I'll see you next week. We'll talk. I, yeah, I'll be here next week. Okay. So, if sake of the argument, this is true, your prophet sending this woman back by force to go and have sex with uh, with a man who she doesn't want it. And the reason for that is, unless she has sex with him, she can she can't go back to her husband. For her to go to the first husband, he must have sex with her. Maybe the prophet, maybe Muhammad, he wants to explain to her that it's not about just to marry on, as we say, on paper. You have to be a wife. What he means to have a but sex, to go back. She's already beaten. But if she and, don't try, and Muhammad didn't even say to her, I'm sorry about those bruises. Muhammad didn't even say to the husband, why did you beat her? And this woman is not like just like someone who's got only red face, but her skin is green. That black turned to the blue and then turned to the green. I don't accept this, uh, so, as I told you. Yeah, I want you to check it out. I am very grateful that your moral standards are much better than your Islamic teachings. So do check it out, because once you check it out, you will find more and more disturbing teachings in it. And you will be so grateful that right now you are not following it. But the bottom line is this, that good that you kind of don't follow it, good that you are not aware of it, therefore you don't follow it. But then the, there is a question of what's going to happen to you when you die? Um, Where are you going to go? For me, if, if we think about that, we cannot reach any points. So what I do to be a good person in life, not to to hurt anyone, not to steal, not to kill. And I'm sure if there is another life after we die, the God, he will give me, I mean, he will judge me proper way, whatever is God, Christian or Muslim or whatever. So I have to be a good person in life. I don't judge people, uh, and I don't judge people according to the religion. If you are Christian, it's up to you. It's your choice. So how good is good? Sorry? How good is good enough? To be good is good have enough. Good, have good. Have good is yeah. good enough for you to good enough for you to go to paradise. No. Uh, still, I have a doubt about that, about paradise. So, <laughs> even, even though if because, you are you know, very good enough, yeah, you, you, I have doubt about a lot of things. But as I told you, to be in, to be in peace, peace in, in my side, I am good man in the life. I treat my wife good way, my children good way, my friends good way. Who will judge? If, if there is somebody who will judge, we can see everything. You understand me? Because so, I know a lot of people, they pray, they pray 24 hours, and they do a lot of bad things. What what the use of prayer? If you, if, you, if you lie, if you kill, if you do this, you understand me? So let, let me say something. So I take it this way. Uh, according to my experience, uh, this is my way of life, to be a good person. I born Muslim, but I don't pray. I don't go to mosque. I don't read Quran. But my parents, they teach me you know, a lot of things, good things, not bad things. 
So what I do, whatever is good, I do. What, what, whatever I don't think is good, I don't do it. Like, like now you said, uh, you beat your wife. Of course, I don't beat. I don't go to to Quran to open to see if my Quran order me to beat my wife or not. Immediately, as a human being, I don't accept. I don't accept. So, your human standards, your human moral standards are much better than Allah and Muhammad. That's something very good. But I ask the question, how good is good enough for you to get to paradise? Because according to Christian scripture, whatever we do, it will never be good enough for God. Because God is so holy, God is so beautiful, God is so delightful, there is nothing can ever meet to his standards. Whatever I do, 24-7, I help the elderly to cross the road. That's not going to be good enough. 24-7, I pray without like taking break. That's not going to be good enough because Bible says that there is something in our hearts are always filthy. There is something in our thoughts is always filthy. There is something in our actions always filthy. And we will never be good enough for God, okay? Even my best, best, best good is not going to be good enough for God. Therefore, therefore, God does something for us. Lord Jesus Christ, who is identified as the Son of God, steps into the world and then says, while those people's heart, has, heart is dirty, while their mind is dirty, while their desire is in somewhere else, I want to get their attention. I want to pour out my love on them. I want to tell them I love them and I want them. And Lord Jesus Christ dies on the cross to forgive my sins. Once for all, with his death and his resurrection, he offers me place in heaven. Not only he offers me place in heaven, he tells me he, I can have fellowship with him, in, with him in heaven. He gives himself for me. So, like, I know it will never, I will be never good enough. But I know Lord Jesus Christ is good enough. Today, if I know, if I die, I know where I am going to go. It's not someone who is going to judge me. Yeah, but is going to say, oh, that day you did that, that thing, that day you did this good thing. I calculated it's five, gra five, five good deeds, therefore go to hell or therefore go to paradise. Lord Jesus Christ, God is going to look at me and then he's going to see his own beauty, his own delight in me. Therefore, he is going to accept me. So that's the very, 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 very basic difference. You express that you do concern, like you don't go to the Quran to check out what does Quran say about how I need to deal with my wife. Because in your mind, your standards is already higher than him. That's very, very good thing. But the one according to Islam, the one who is going to judge you, let's say sake of the argument, there is lots of internal critics on that, but discussions on that. Sake of the argument, Allah, when Allah judges you, Allah is going to say, oh, your wife was disobedient to you, but you didn't beat your wife. And that will be negative point for you. I don't think so. If, if, if Allah, if God is a fair enough, but he's not he, fair. He will, he will even forgive some mistakes also. <laughs> he, he is not fair. He is not fair. Yeah, you're talking about God. Allah, God Allah, is Allah, Allah is the same. No, for me, no, your God, my Allah is the same. No, no. For, for me, it's not the same. But the reason is... No, no. We're using different I way of no, no, Allah. No, no, no. <laughs> Sir, the, the reason it's not the same, your God and my God is different, because does your God have a son? No, the problem so, is, it's not a God. No, 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 just a moment. It's a your God, just a moment. Your God doesn't have a son. No. Okay? My God has a son. Lord Jesus Christ is the eternal son of the Father. Okay? Does your God, does your, what, what, what was your God doing before he created anything? Like, before there was anything, what was Allah doing? It's another problem, I 
gods. No, not no. Allah or no, God. no, no. Your God. So I'm just making a point. Yeah. Your God and my God is different. So your God, before the creation, was alone, lonely, and needy. Versus my God, Yahweh, God of Bible, was having fellowship. There was a fellowship between Father, Son, and Spirit. Father was loving the Son in the fellowship of Holy Spirit before the foundation of the world. Okay? So, does your, does your God, you say it like God is just, He will judge me. Would you say, is it just to kill? Not kill, actually. There is a hadith I am very much disturbed. So, in Islam, in Islam, if when you die, okay, when you go to hell, Allah is going to give your sins only because I am Christian so that you can go to Islamic paradise. I don't think that is just. Do you think that is just? I am taking your sin only and I'm going to get cooked in hell because of your sins. I think uh, all, all people from our religion, they, they will go, there, if there is a paradise, all the people from our religion, I mean the good people, according to your explanation, they will go to paradise. Not no, only Muslims, I, I'm, but I'm religion. so sorry yeah, if, that, if that's what you understood from what I said, because that has nothing to do with what I said. What you say? Being because, good enough, what? being good enough what? is not going to get because me to heaven. God will judge it on, is on God what you do. God himself who gets me to heaven. So, so let, let, let's just them to uh, bark or cry and then go and then I'll continue. What's happening, Fatima? I think uh, God will judge according to what you do. But I, I asked the question. Whatever you are. Whatever you do, I ask, God is fair enough. Yes. He will not. How can, good, how can it be? How you are, can you, you be person, fairly judged? If you are a good person, I she don't think God person. will, sorry, sorry, sorry. will punish you. She know good person. If, if there is a God, she, she know has good person in her body. Okay. Is it? Is it? It's is, like is it the criteria of the good person to be their wife? Women in a woman's body. A jinn. Uh, a jinn. I have appointment. Sorry, yeah, because I have uh, to go. appointment. Um, I, I will be here next week. Every week che here. Yeah, check what I said to you. And you are accountable for what I said. So I would keep you no, accountable you are, for thank you. searching and coming back. Don't believe don't believe what I say. Go and search it. Sure. You will come to the same conclu conclusion and we will talk here next week. Okay? God bless you, sir. Thank you very much. <laughs>